Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. It's week 69, and these are the digs our diggers have for us today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply head on over to the Patreon page linked in the video description. Now without further ado, let's begin. So starting things off today, Paul Shear had a failed dig. DOS games backslash arcade backslash bandits underscore. And this one failed for a pretty annoying reason. Okay, there's no mouse controls, and the I key for instructions is doing nothing. High scores? High scores doesn't work either. Play? Uh, none of the keyboard keys are doing anything. No, I've tried a number of things, and I could not get the keyboard keys to work properly. They just doesn't work, so I guess fail dig, unless I can f someone can come up with some idea as to why the keyboard keys wouldn't work in here. Actually, this next dig from Paul Shearer didn't really fail, but it didn't really succeed. I don't know. So this one's win games backslash unclassified backslash first mate, and you guys will see what I mean in a moment here. I'm going to guess this has something to do with sailing or something ship related or maybe it's something else entirely it's just first mate makes it sound like something to do with that well we got a write file here first mate the pilot version 3.0 september 14 release program is first released of eventually a fully featured navigation program for microsoft windows 3.x First module is piloting program. Piloting program allows you to compile a track of waypoints, forming the intercalculations on the basis of known information. Solutions are given responsible to double clicking on the cell whose value is being sought. So I'm already getting the impression that this is probably not a game, but rather a tool for assisting with learning how to do like navigation stuff with boating. And apparently it's being sold by an Alliance Marine Limited based in the US, and the original sale price was $20. So, let's see what we got here. Okay, so, well, first of all, it doesn't maximize properly. <laughs> You'd think for software like this that maybe, just maybe they, you know, <laughs> get that right. But let's see. Maybe the rest of it works fine. Uh, that doesn't do anything. Uh, voyage plan, almanac. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of numbers that I don't have any interest in setting. Enter dead reckoning information. Well, that doesn't help when your one of your labels is not sized properly. And yeah, it looks like a lot of this doesn't actually work. Oh, we got a voyage plan screen here. Yeah, this is actually a hard thing to cover because I'm really not sure what to um <laughs> what to do for this. Because like I mean this is I imagine if you had any knowledge of boating, this would probably make a whole bunch of sense. Like well, first of all, I can tell just from looking at this that this is basically like plotting out like the trip you're gonna take based on the latitude and longitude coordinates that you're heading towards, and then giving you, like, ETAs and stuff like that. But this is a lot of information that's kind of hard to fake, <laughs> so it's hard to see what the program would, how the program's actually supposed to work. I mean, if I had any, any interest in boating, I could probably put some numbers in, but I don't have a clue what numbers I should be putting in. One thing I can say is that it is very annoying that a lot of these labels, like you can see little bits and pieces of yellow right there, that's not a glitch. What's ended up happening is that the text being shown is not fitting within the confines of the, of the text box that's been defined. So what ends up happening is that when it reaches the end of the line, it scrolls to the next, but uh-oh, your text box isn't big enough, so it just gets cut off. Like... Given the fact that I'm using pretty much default um, DPI settings, there's no excuse for this. This is something that should have been noticed way before this software was released. So, and yeah, it's happening right here and also right here. Like, 
that you shouldn't be charging $20 for software where you can't even get your text labels working right. And yeah, for whether or not the rest of this works properly, I have no idea. There's, I have no means of testing this program properly. So, I don't know. We've already had one failed dig from Paul Shear, and this technically isn't a failed dig, but it's not a successful one either. Um, okay, I think I've run into a situation like this in the past before. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just not going to count this one against Paul Shear in terms of the number of digs he's had. So, yeah, I'll give I'll give him another one tomorrow. But, or wait a minute, what am I saying tomorrow? Next week. <laughs> I don't do these every day. I do these once a week. Jeez. I'm really not in it today. Hopefully that doesn't come across with the rest of the games we take a look at. Well, this wasn't a game. The rest of the software that we end up looking at. Next up, Jim has dug up DOS games backslash arcade 3 backslash Zulu 30. Doesn't the word Zulu have something to do with time or something? And wow, it's a lot of files. <laughs> Uh, let's see what we got. Got some icon files. Well, ICN. That's not the Windows icon file, because otherwise it would be ICO. Um, we got a setup program. Let's see. Tournament of Zulula setup. Graphics. Uh, EGA VGA four colors, palettes adjusted. Interesting. Oh, that's the only setup option. Okay, what's the actual, um, Zulula. This version is unregistered. Uh, I should assume so. Shareware notice. The author, please send ten dollars or twelve dollars Canadian to Oracle Software. Surely not the same Oracle Software. That really Oracle Software. That's got to be a different. One. Well, maybe I don't. I... Well, I, you don't have much else to say while we're waiting for this 30-second timer to count down, but still. I'll have to look into that, see if it's the same Oracle software as before. Eh, maybe not. That's a pretty weird logo. Oh, jeez. Okay, I wasn't particularly planning for a Halloween-themed, um... <laughs> Shovelware diggers, even though I'm releasing this like the day after, but here we are. <laughs> Copyright 8993 Christian Booten. That's pretty graphic, and suddenly we're in joystick calibrations? Seriously? Press escape if you do not have a joystick. And now it's flashing strike any key to continue. This is going to be a little weird because this is used this is currently in the CGA 640 by 200 mode, which DOSBox doesn't um, stretch properly, so everything looks yeah really um okay. I'll I'll show it I'll show it right now, but this is how it actually looks to me right now. <laughs> so just to give you an idea of what's going on. But anyways, tournament is canceled. Mayor took. That decision after he learned about the infiltration of the tournament by an unregistered user. Oh, was it because I tried to... Interesting. Okay, so now we're in a more proper CGA screen. Um, set players. Okay, so... Well, that's a lot of interesting um, races. So we got human, land octopus, dog, ostrich, zombie, cyclop, not cyclops, eye, half spider, and human. Half spider with what's the other half? <laughs> um, anyways, duel. Flashing strike any key to continue. Okay, so I can jump. Move left, back, and forward. Can't duck. Or no, wait, there's a duck. It's the enter key for some reason. And so how do I actually swing back? I have no idea what key swings back. Okay, I'm going to actually set the right player to keyboard. 
I'm going to put it back into dual mode. This way I actually have a chance to figure out the keys. That's interesting. If you set both players to keyboard, both players have control with the same keyboard keys. That's counterintuitive. Okay, so it's based on the keypad. So keypad zero is the swing. When you move back and forward, enter is your duck. You can move while ducking? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, and you can jump at an angle. And that seems to be about it. Okay, so... Let's turn it back to a computer. Let's actually make it, uh... Let's make it an ostrich. Why not? So, dual. Winging the ostrich. That's a big ostrich. Uh, come have some sword. So this is literally just a button mash? Whoa. I think I just got wrecked by that ostrich. <laughs> uh, maybe I should read the read this. Okay, so... Zalula is the, one of the smallest town in the country of Zala. Usually a commercial center relaying the Westall Ocean to the rest of the continent. Every year, the city of Zulula, these are hard to pronounce, turns into chaos. Turn into chaos. Also, the English is not very good. Streets are invaded from all over Akastar. Creatures of all types and size come as soon as the city turns into... And soon the city turns into Panama. Yeah, this is not very good English. Yeah, I got a funny feeling that this Christian Boutin is probably a very young kid of some sort. Probably it's like someone in their teens or something, because it's kind of the the English has the feeling of somebody who's still learning English. I could be wrong about that. Maybe it was written by somebody in, who's normally French or something, which is possible. This person is in Quebec, so you know that's very possible too. That the person's primary language is is French, and they're just that's why their English isn't as good. Or wait, hang on a second. This is from the same place that made Construction Bob and the Bouncing Factory. Which kind of explains that title screen. So this time around, I'm going to be a dog and let's fight against... Let's fight against that half spider. See if it really is like half spider or not, or if it's just a fancy name. Okay, so I'm definitely not a dog. And I tongue lash things. Come on. Can I defend? I can defend. But that doesn't really do much, then. Yeah, there I go. <laughs> the problem is you're striking keys when the, um... When the end happens. Like, when the game ends, there's no, like, delay to ensure that you're not bypassing all the screens. So if you're still pushing keys to attack when the game over happens, then you skip past all these end screens. Okay, so that was the Tournament of Zalula. This game is, um, very basic. Definitely has the feel of a game that is definitely made by somebody who hasn't quite gotten, still learning how to program, but at the same time actually putting some interesting stuff together despite that. Like, it's interesting in how uh, well, first of all, the fact that it actually works. <laughs> Usually when you start talking about um, software made by people who are just learning how to program, you're talking about stuff that's probably going to have bugs or other issues, but no, this one actually functions. And it has, a f for, it has a fair number of playable characters, despite the fact that the game is really freaking basic. In fact, it probably was written in basic, judging by the way this is working. But in any case, Tournament of Zulula. Interesting piece of DOS history, but not very playable. And to finish things off today, Matan Hirschberg's dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash B zone. Wasn't Battlezone commercial software? This can't be that, can it? It's dated 1995, but that can mean anything, especially given that both files have the exact same date, and the COM file is literally only 768 bytes big. Hmm. 
Well, let's see what we got. Yeah, this... This looks and sounds like Battle Zone. <laughs> um, well, anywho, we got the keys here. F1 start game, F9 screen left, F10 screen right. What? Hmm. Uh, let's change keys. That way we actually know what everything does. Forward, back, left, right, fire. Oh. Forward, back, left, right, fire. Basically the same keys. Okay. <laughs> Although spacebar doesn't actually show, it just shows us actual space character, which shows us nothing. So, uh, yeah, I guess start game. Whoop. Yeah, this is actually Battle Zone. Whoa. Now, I already have the cycles turned down for this, because this is actually how the game would have played, is at this low a speed. But yeah, this is definitely the PC port of Battlezone. So, I have no idea if this was ever released as freeware. I don't think it was, but I don't know. And it's hard to know, it's hard to know too, just because of the, whoop. There I go. <laughs> it's hard to know too because Battlezone eventually had a remake at one point. And the remake is very different from this original game. And how is this supposed to get out of the way of that guy? So for those unfamiliar, which I don't think is going to be very many of you, but for those of you unfamiliar, Battlezone is like one of the granddaddies of 3D vector-based games. In fact, I think it was the first 3D vector game. I don't know if it was the first 3D game or the first vector game. I'm pretty sure it's not the first vector game. I'm pretty sure that was like... Not spa... No, what was it? Was it Asteroids? I think it was Asteroids. I could be mistaken. But it's... Pretty sure it's the first 3D vector-based game. So yeah, I don't really need to show too much of this one, do I? <laughs> oh, I'm getting attacked. There you go. Actually, dodge that guy. Now, me personally, I don't know if any, if how many of you have watched my um, filler video on Atari 2600 games, but. I actually prefer Robot Tank over Battlezone. Robot Tank was sort of Activision's response to Battlezone. Robot Tank is a much more... It's the same style of gameplay, but there's more to it. You actually have, like, different systems that you have to keep in working order, and... You're fighting throughout the day, so the time of day changes, and certain environment factors come into play. None of that happened in Battlezone, but then Robot Tank was pretty much just an Atari 2600 game. I don't think there's actually a... There's actually an arcade version of it. I might be wrong. So yeah, so this is definitely the original commercial re PC release of Battlezone. Again, whether it, whether it's freeware or whether this is wares, I don't know. There was no documentation included. In fact, that's a funny thing, is that this game didn't... The, there was no copyright when we booted this up, was there? So, like, I mean, there's every possibility the copyright was simply ripped out, because that happens with a lot of stuff like this. But then it's also possible it never did have the copyright in the game, and there was only in a text file or something. I don't know. I haven't done a proper review of Battlezone. Partly because it wouldn't make for a very long video. This is a very simple game when it comes down to it. So... In any case... I don't really have much more to say about it. It's Battle Zone, so... But I pro it's probably an interesting thing to see for any of you who didn't realize that there was a, piece, a DOS PC port of this game.